<laughs> Fingers pointing at each other. <laughs> you could confuse an old man, you know. I know, I know. When you become an old man. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Okay, good. Then I'll sit here. Yes. <laughs> you can barely see. Your foot is showing. And your tongue is showing too. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that my feet? Yes, yeah. it's your feet. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like five <laughs> seconds later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see them. Yeah. 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 You see yourself there? Yeah. <laughs> you can see. But yeah, you're just happy and there. <laughs> I can see. Is that, you took a video of it or what? It's online. Uh, people are watching. Online. Uh, I, I saw there were about 27 people who had at least watched five parts of it. Oh. How can you tell? There's a, 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 a counter. Oh. Yeah. Did it say where they're from? No. 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 But they can make commentary, comments, no? Yeah, we have, we have, I don't think we've turned that on yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, technology. Yeah, it's fun, huh? Yeah. It's amazing. Well, I thought I'd better bring it in, then we all know. What yeah, about, yeah. I, didn't, uh, I think people need to know because I don't Actually, people, people share some really personal things. Yes, I They know. might not want to. I know. I, and you know, normally, every time I say it at the beginning, or I have to screen up at the beginning, but uh, I put it on, we put it on the internet, and I somehow, oh yeah. So later on I realize, oh God, yeah. I have to make that clear. Yeah. So. We wait. Well, actually we have everyone here. Oh, yeah, let's see. Oh yeah, it's actually 46. Yeah, you can see the count. Oh. Three at the moment with 46 have been watching. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good. Well, we're one of the three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are. Oh, we are, yeah. Oh, us. <laughs> this room. There's a time lag here, then. Huh? Yeah, time lag. Yeah, five seconds or so. Five seconds. Good. So, so we just want to check in and then see how everybody's doing. Yeah, some feedback and then we're, uh, we can continue. <coughs> Who wants to kick off? Last and um, last night before um, dinner, we um, we watched the other video of mm. Krishnamurti and mm. we talked about the self. And what was really interesting for me was uh, uh, that um, there should be no effort. Mm -hmm. Any kind of effort will bring you kind of you deep, a deeper hole of yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. and um, that was 
something, you know, even we, we talked about it, but he said it in a, like, I mean, it clarified it a little mm -hmm. more when mm -hmm. he said no effort. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> so, and the next thing that was interesting for me was that he said, um, you know, if you could not be attached and, and not be attached to anything or anybody, and which, which would therefore bring about um, a sense of deep responsibility, mm -hmm. not just for your own self mm -hmm. and for your family, but mm -hmm. responsibility per se. Mm -hmm. and I think that was like a miraculous thing, you know, it was so new to me. Mm -hmm. It was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to kind of go a little bit deeper into it, it's just like I think it's magical. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's also the feeling I get. Perhaps this morning, today being the last day, we should go much deeper, mm. as much as possible, mm. so we can reach the crux of the issues mm. and uh, prepare us for the next year mm. until we come back again. <laughs> <laughs> sooner perhaps. I'm looking forward to coming uh, to the next theme uh, uh, in uh, weekend in, I think it's in, is it in January? Or February. I think it's February. In, yes. And I think this is what, this is what Kay would, did want us to do. Hmm. As he felt, it seemed to me, uh, that's what he was doing. Mm. In, his, in his talks, and then the key word there was together. Mm. Together uh, uh, and not apart, <laughs> because that's perhaps the state of, of all of us we feel uh, separate, and, uh, and we don't realize that mm. we are this human race, mm. and if, that we need to be together. Mm. In our learning as well as our living. Yeah. <coughs> it's a very nice feeling. I won't say gone completely, but there is an observation of chattering or uh, chattering comes to the minimal level, mm. very minimal level. That's what I see it and uh, as soon as you leave this premises, it's completely different. Something is there in here. <coughs> That's makes you to feel come back. Once more, a beautiful day, and here we are in a beautiful place. And uh, our group seems to fit together really pretty well, you know, compared with some that I've been in. And um, I really appreciate that. I appreciate that the group works together really pretty, pretty well, and that we've been able to, uh, you know, go into some interesting things. And also that we've had the good fortune to uh, um, have a couple of really good videos that are kind of clear, and especially the last one when Christian Marie was in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> Almost entertaining. And <clears throat> let's see what else. Oh yes, uh, that our facilitator seems to do such a good job of, uh, you know, hurting us without us even hardly knowing it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I feel 
and it's great to see you guys too in, in the thing. So anyway, I feel really good about what's going on. dimensions and levels and so I'm very grateful for all that information. You guys all break down for me. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> It's funny, I, you know, yesterday evening at the end of the meal, I had a heavy headache. I said, oh, I'm going to get a flu. So I went home, I went straight to bed. And uh, when I woke up, I was fantastic again. Amazing, huh? Uh, so, yeah, I feel really, I feel good. I feel really uh, at ease here with the group. I'm, I'm excited. I think we're really able to uh, keep questions central and to keep unraveling it and let them go for a while and then come back. I mean, everything seems to be... Um, and the videos have been selected by Tom. Uh, Tom is a, a person who works at the office. And, uh, and I often, I, at this one, I didn't even see beforehand. I just trust that he selects some good ones. <coughs> and he did, so... You mean there are some bad ones? Unfortunately, <laughs> 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 uh, in my criteria, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's not because of Krishna Muti, but there are there are ones when there are, for example, I don't, he mentioned that also here. He said um, we, we now have questions and answers. We don't do dialogue anymore. Until about seventy six or something, he did dialogues with the whole group, like a hundred thousand yes. people. And then he stopped because it became such a mess. It became really like everybody. Like it would, you would see Chris and Woody sit here, sitting and then everybody was just talking and talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there are videos that are not, not bad, but are not so suitable for conducive to what we're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy that we can keep the topics questions central and we can back and then we can create a space, hold a space and I have the feeling that everybody feels free to, uh, feels confident enough and trust enough to, in the group to, to speak and to contribute, so I think that's really wonderful. So, uh, now we have a whole morning. Did, did Sita pass? Oh, Sita, Sita. Sita, how are you? Great, <laughs> 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 It's a wonderful group. I connected very well 
I see myself in everybody. In everybody's presentation, that's a remarkable thing for me. That tells me a lot of openness is there. We feel comfortable with everybody without. Oh yeah, that question is my question. Kind of a thing started coming to the Thanks for this opportunity and uh, if we all can meet, maybe already planning. <laughs> Time. Time. <laughs> it, it would be nice. It should be convenient to everybody too. It doesn't mean that it's a closed one. But you always conduct only two days? So far, yes. Well, maybe we can next year do a, a week one. Yeah. yeah. Please let us know. Hmm. Okay. Well, there's a new one coming up in January, but it's, January? it's, it's all That's booked. booked up. In April, we have a week one uh, facilitated by Richard Waxberg and the board. Hmm. That's in April. That has still maybe a few places. You know? And then there's one in July. And there's an education one, of course. They're all week long programs. Mm -hmm. So Richard is doing it three times this year. Yes. January, July, April. And, and August. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so we have uh, the whole morning. Uh, I have one more video, which we can choose when we want to launch that. And um, in the afternoon, uh, after three o'clock, we have one. Uh, one hour slot just to end the day and see how everybody's doing and evaluate and just to uh, close, have a kind of closure. Um, it's about 10 o'clock. Um, so what do we propose? Do we want to first talk and exp explore a little bit more, see which questions are still open maybe? And then uh, uh, and, and maybe uh, watch the video at a certain point, at a natural point, or do we want to go straight into the video? How, where is everybody? What do we think? Can we talk a little first? Hmm. Either way. Yeah. Revisit our questions. Yeah. <coughs> Which question have we haven't touched upon at all? Is transformation a permanent state? Did we discuss that? We talked about that. We talked about that. <coughs> what is the significance of life? <laughs> we answered that one. We answered that one. <laughs> I would say perhaps what is observation? Observation. <coughs> and what is the awakening of intelligence? They may all be. I'm already intelligent. <laughs> yeah, I feel I grew up in my intelligence. <laughs> I mean, really, from yesterday to today, I feel. <laughs> I'm joking, but I'm not joking. I feel I'm more intelligent. <laughs> well, that's good then. Maybe you can kick that topic off. Observation is coming, right? Clarity and integrity we did. Is it possible to live without a self? What would it be? I mean, that was discussed yesterday also, I think, mm -hmm. in the video. Can we drop the idea of the self? I think that's also discussed. What is it that transforms? If there is no, if there is no self, what is it that transforms anyway? And how can we live authentically? <laughs> so, and love and compassion. And all of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't in the question there, uh, the, there's some of the answer. The answer is in, in the question I, I recall uh, Kay saying that many times. Uh, so the right question has the right, has the right answer, <laughs> has the answers in it. So when I look at the last one, the, how can one live authentically, there's an implication that we're not living uh, authentically. Uh, and whatever that word is, what is that word? When you're not living authentically, falsely. Mm. 
hypocritically, inauthentic, you know, uh, real, and authentic means real, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're living unreal, mm. and the world, uh, the unreal world is, mm. where is the unreal <coughs> world? If we're living in the real world, right, uh, that we can uh, assume, mm. uh, then what is the unreal world that we live in, uh, inauthentic? So, so what are the non-authentic <coughs> elements, you know, yes. right? what, what is it that... Uh, makes us say, um, we live in a non-authentic, what are the elements? Yeah. And I think it may be related to the self. Mm -hmm. This whole idea of who we think we are. And who we think you, <laughs> the other uh, is. I would say when there's conflict, there must be the perception that there's something wrong, this is not authentic, mm. there's too much conflict in that. Almost born in conflict and continue living in conflict our whole lives. Mm. That would suggest that something is not quite right, something is not real, mm. something is not authentic. Mm. So we have to look at conflict. <coughs> so what's conflicting? Mm. Is the real the real conflicting with uh, the ideal uh, or the idea, and that's where the conflict starts or begin. Yeah. If I think you are uh, the enemy <laughs> or uh, you're going to attack me, uh, or you're not good for me, and then I'll come back in a defensive mode yeah. or play the offensive role. I'll be very offensive. <laughs> As Rodney King would say, uh, can we all get along? I also, when I don't seem to understand, that also implies some sort of conflict. That this vast universe is out there, yet I don't really understand what to do, uh, how to interact with people. I don't understand about the universe itself in the first place, what it's all about. That also implies some sort of conflict. Mm -hmm. okay. Second question, what is the significance of life? Yes. Mm. <coughs> so again, there is a separation there. Life has to have a significance which is different from me. Mm. I want the significance, meaning, mm. to the life. Mm. So there I am separating from the life. Myself. Mm -hmm. So if we really, honestly want the significance of the life, so that separation has to go. Is that the cause of... Uh, that means if the separation is not there... These are all kinds. Before that, what are we separating from the life? Right? We are separated. <coughs> so, if I'm not separated, I'm the life. So that may, so this separated entity has to go. Is that the fear? Tying up to your question, I don't understand what is this universe. Mm -hmm. That means I want to understand the universe. Mm -hmm. Me mm -hmm. being this little separated self, the vastness which I want to understand. Yes. So these questions, they come in there. 
So the, the, self, the self wanted to accumulate more, more. in order to and control it. <laughs> and all the attempted answers to that question, <coughs> how do we relate to the universe, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Of the creations of different belief systems to explain that, separate. Someone has a different belief. They're wrong. They're going the wrong path. They're causing the problems. That's a big cause of the, the separation and the conflict. All these explanations that have been created over many, many generations that we cling to. How did this separation come to begin with? Condition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what, what, what comes to my mind is, um, can we bring it down to our daily life somehow? Because, I mean, if we stay on the, on the big level, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, it, it becomes abstract. Right. And how, do, how do we talk? I mean, uh, Mundial was talking, it's about conflict at a certain point. Now, <coughs> um, uh, and what you were saying is like the significance of life here, yeah, when does that question come up at all? Is when. Uh, uh, yeah, is that it? When, <laughs> when does the question arise? Is when there what is, is a what, what's the significance of life? <laughs> It's when there's unhappiness, I guess. Yeah. Right, so I just, so what is, what is a daily existence? Yeah. <coughs> when we are talking about it, one thing is conflict. It is associated with the energy in the sense a little, of... A little louder. When we say about conflict, that does really drain your energy. Mm. In the physical plane, when you run, when you do exercises, you come and say, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. I want to take energy, I want to take a break. Mm. In the conflict, where there's so much of going on, if there is a realization that I'm losing my energy in this, like in the other side, in the physical plane where you say, I lost energy, I want to take rest. But that kind of thing doesn't ever come. The conflict goes on. That you are not seeing that you are losing energy. Mm -hmm. But once, if you see that you are losing energy <coughs> on this, that perception may bring you to a point, what is it I'm wasting time on this conflict? Uh, I have a question. Is uh, what we talk, we're talking about conflict, is the conflict we're talking about inside of us or with people? Inside us. In the people, are, even if the people outside are, it's, it's inside. <coughs> the people may be outside, but the conflict is within you but you picturize them as outsiders. That's how I see it. But I think we have to be careful here because conflict may be of many different types. Because it may also be that, again, in that CEO analogy, I want to become the CEO of the company, <coughs> but there are four other people who also want to become CEO of the company, and therefore I feel in conflict with that. So that may be perhaps a, a symptom of an original conflict, so to speak. We have to try to understand that, that which conflict are we talking about here. How is this particular conflict, how do you, what, what is the conflicting element there? Well, in one case, I want something and I'm maybe prevented from getting that. Mm -hmm. So that's a conflict. Whereas so, so a deeper conflict would be I'm not feeling quite right about myself, I'm not really inwardly content, mm. and therefore I'm constantly positing various types of ambitions. 
mm-hmm. or desires. Mm-hmm. That's also a conflict. Mm-hmm. But there, isn't there also a true conflict where you feel that you know somebody is doing something that's that, you know that's not right? So there's conflict, you know. I mean, yeah, somebody's doing something that's not right. Yeah, that's then, according to, to you? my judgment. No, 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 no. To you? no but uh, what is then? Where does the con- where does it become a conflict for you? Somebody's not doing something right. You can say something, or you can disassociate yourself. But because it might af- be affecting my life. So the conflict is then not in the person doing something, but it's, it's because you want to some- have something up, get something out of it. It's affecting your life. So the kind of dependency on that. Yeah. Uh, uh, attachment. Yeah. Attachment. Are your idea or image too? Mm. It could be your idea or image. So you can't, yeah, because so you can never be self-righteous here. Mm. Yeah, no, no I, I think it's more important that the, the one is the situation, outward situation. People might say, look, if if you call me an idiot, that might be a conflict to me, but it might also not be a conflict to me. I might just say, oh well, okay. just he is upset. I might also say, well. I'm not an idiot. Well, then I'm in conflict. <laughs> 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 you know, what I'm saying is that yes. you need, uh, uh, the conflict starts when you participate in it. As a conflict. So in this sense, what you're saying that there should never be wars. I mean, there should, you know, you, you, you can, you know, because if you're not attached to any, anything or anybody, you're not dependent, mm-hmm. then then you just go about living your own life. Mm. Uh, <coughs> no matter what the other person does, right or wrong. Well, you might care. You might still care for it. I mean, doesn't that, you don't have to be indifferent, but, uh, but there's something different. In, in, uh, uh, care is different from being attached to a certain outcome. Care or love or affection is different from being attached to a certain outcome. Right. I want this person to change his behavior. I want this person to do this. I want this person to do that. Because if you attach to a certain outcome, because you have an investment in it, that's where the conflict. The conflict comes in the attachment, not in what this person does. So if you care, yeah, if you care, you say, well, you might tell the person, well, I really think uh, what you're doing is is, is problematic. That can be, can be coming out of care. What do you think? And if the other person that ignores you? So, what's the problem? Then it's sad. Then you're sad. That's no problem still. There's no problem in sadness. Yeah, it's such a waste though, you think. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah such sad. a waste of human life. Right? Yeah. That's sad. Right? Like but when, you see, when you look outside and you see people in war, it's sad, right? Think about someone like Krishnamurti Nasi. Uh-huh. For him, presumably he was in the ultimate sanity mode. Uh-huh. And he saw almost the whole planet living uh-huh. irrationally or unintelligently. He didn't get depressed and break down and cry and commit suicide. Right? Right. He, he just talked yeah. about what was... He was sad about it, but perhaps he wasn't really sad because in that state of sanity, there's also this inherent joy. So there can be joy, but also concern for the for humanity that they're not living intelligently. Are we looking at compassion? Well, I think maybe I I think it's maybe important that we know what that what what conflict entails, right? Maybe before we go to Compassion, because that's a... There are so many <coughs> different levels of conflict. <coughs> if you're economically dependent on the person that you're having the disagreement with, mm. that could be a problem. It could be a problem, but is it a conflict? Well... We started with the idea of not feeling that what someone was doing was wrong. 
if you're not dependent on them, maybe it doesn't, maybe it won't, it's possible for, you know, to not be attached to their being wrong or right or changing, but if your very survival depends on their behavior, I would call that a real problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I understand. I'm, I'm saying there are real problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think it's also important to at least uh, investigate. We might have an assumption that conflict is always uh, uh, caused by external circumstances. Oh, you, you, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I'm not and, saying that. And then even, um, like, and, and that's why it, it, uh, we're trying to shift the perspective, or we're trying to at least look at different perspectives yeah. at conflict, yeah. because we might be caught in a certain assumption about what life is, yeah. and that life inherently has conflict. Mm -hmm. And more or less how it's portrayed is that no, inevitably there will be conflict, so your yeah. life will be in conflict, and that's how you have to accept it. You know? And our brains project that. Mm. It's somehow in the, like a discussion of Krishnamurti with some young kids was about integrity, it was about in India, about corruption. Mm -hmm. and, and at a certain point he said to these kids, will you never be corrupt? Yeah. And, and he said, will you never, even if you have to die for it. Even if you have to die for it. So, <laughs> just as a perspective, mm -hmm. that the consequence me means my, you, might have not a, you might not have to have a livelihood. So, I mean, I'm just, uh, at least to take in consideration what, uh, the anatomy, mm -hmm. what, what is creating the cold? You know, the other analogy is that there's only, you know, you can't clap with one hand. Where's the sound? Yeah. You know? so, so, it means for conflict, there always has to be us participating in it, meaning uh, being uh, some yeah. form of attachment in it. Yeah. I mean, like, for instance, we're sitting here and we're calm, and somebody bangs at the window, I mean, kind yeah. of. Yeah. That's a conflict, right? No, yeah, but you have to make clear where the conflict starts here. Yeah. Where does the conflict start? Yeah. So I'm, somebody bangs on the wall, on the window. Now, where does the conflict start? When he bangs on the window. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> it's afterwards. I'm sitting here, and he's banging on the window. Yeah. If I have plugs in my ear, I don't hear it. <laughs> so, so, so where does the conflict start? Doesn't it start in my because it breaks well, our... Well, I want to sit comfortably yeah. Yeah, here. Yeah, so, so that's it, that's yeah. it. There the is. conflict starts with having a, an attachment to I want to sit comfortably here and quietly. That's where the, where the conflict starts. Is that like you're resisting the, uh, 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 what is happening. Oh, so you mean the conflict is not there if I just jump up and uh, push him away? <laughs> No, 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 it's not like that. That, that, that. That's how you're going to solve it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> the nature of the, okay, the conflict okay. starts is that I want to sit quietly here and he's banging on the window. Yeah. So I'm attached to wanting to sit here quietly and he's attached to or has a motivation to bang on the window. So you see, it's not banging on the window itself that creates the conflict. You participate, you're clapping also because you want to sit quietly here. So well, then I don't the have hand. the right to sit quietly. But yeah. So, so yeah. if you have the idea of wanting that you have the right, you have even more conflict. And even more so. And even more so. But, but <laughs> <laughs> it's more on a psychological level, I think, yeah. that um, Anthony DeMello said, no one can ever hurt you. Mm. You can only hurt yourself. Mm. 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 I, I got an example here, but not an example, a real story of Christian movie. Mm. Most of you might have idea, but exactly banging the door, okay? So he was giving a talk in Santa, and there are some other people, uh, some group came to attend the talks, and one of the guys who was there, he doesn't like the group. So Krishnamurti is in the bass, and he's literally, suddenly he comes and pulls the mic from Krishnamurti. Krishnamurti gets, gets put up, that's it. He comes and <coughs> announces, saying that so and so group should not belong here, they should go out. Mm. And he gives away some two minutes, this thing, you know. Krishnamurti mm. was silent, and then he's gone. He takes the mic again, continues his speech. <laughs> <laughs> you feel this? No resistance. Huh? No resistance. But what if the man stayed there and caused more and more? No, 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 no
no, but, yeah, but brought his friends. I mean, we, so, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it could be, uh, so we have to look what, what this example, if we say because Krishnamurti shows that he's assumingly enlightened, quote, 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 <laughs> and therefore, there, but we still have, I mean, I'm still, I think it's important to know what we mean by conflict and how, how what the nature is of conflict. Yeah. Because as soon as we project conflict outwardly, we don't take responsibility anymore for the fact that we are attached to mm -hmm. a certain outcome. Yes. To a certain outcome. Yeah. But, yeah, so we shouldn't be attached to a certain outcome. Well, that's another thing, but I mean, it's more than what is the nature of conflict. Right. There's also, there's two things. One is that uh, if there's a shoot, there's also a new conflict. I should be this. Exactly. Sorry, I'm going to move No, egotistically, you can say uh, there's this whole need to be in comfort and in pleasure all the time. Mm -hmm. right? And this man is knocking on the window and is causing a certain annoyance. And me, from that egoistic perspective, of always wanting pleasure and, and, and happiness calm. and so on. Yeah. And calm can also be in that pleasure. Then we get incredibly annoyed. On the other hand, we're trying to have a discussion here. Mm. There's a constant knocking on, on the window <laughs> there. We probably would not be able to do that. So, so we don't want that situation as well. I mean, that's not an attachment, perhaps. Mm. That it's not a pleasure. We're having some sort of rational dialogue here, and we can't have that constant knocking. I mean, there may be more than one person. There may be five people. We, we would not be able to concentrate. So, I, I, we can take action yeah, without getting annoyed. Well, but can we, can go, we can go outside and say, please, you know, we're trying to have a discussion here. <laughs> yeah. But, but and, it and still doesn't solve the problem. Now, there's, uh, <coughs> don't you ever ask, why is he knocking at the, at yeah. the, at the, uh, at the window? Yeah, so I care. This is care. Yeah. 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 This is compassion. <laughs> uh, uh, to care about the knocking at the window. But the, what we're saying is that I just care about <laughs> yes. me, my own uh, comfort, uh, and so. It, well, most likely, you could, in this situation, it's time to annoy us. No, no, but we don't. That's a really a, Well, I mean, in this, in this situation, we're assuming that he's just doing yeah. it to, to, to annoy us. He may be, maybe in distress. Maybe somebody's chasing him. That's a different story. Well, no, no, but, but in this case, we don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know. That's the. But let's make the assumption that he's purposefully doing no, it to no, annoy us. No, let's not make the assumption. <laughs> let's look at the actuality. We don't know why the person <coughs> is knocking at the window. Okay? That's the truth. <laughs> That's the area to, uh, to be in. Uh, and, and out of not knowing, uh, what do you call it? I don't know what you call it. Uh, care? <laughs> you care about... Uh, the the yeah, care of goes of from one's own. No, I agree with you. That has to be, that also has to, to be there. Uh, what's happening at at the moment? Uh, it's to me, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful place to be, <laughs> uh, and uh, not knowing. And I think I get the the message from uh, uh, that's what Kay is saying too. You live in uh, in a world of not knowing remember the known, <laughs> but you live in the world of the known. You want to stick in your own familiar uh, place, and that guy's bothering your known. <laughs> uh, the unknown is bothering uh, your known. Uh, no, I agree. There has to be some sort of reflection about that. What, just, what is making him do that? Is he? Uh, we can have to ask but him. The what, truth, what is? But the what's truth, going on with yeah. You, but you know? right at the moment of the knocking on the window is that you don't know. So that's, 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 true. that's true. And it's, a, it's a, what is it, a starting point, awakening up? This is an awakening of intelligence. <laughs> this is an opportunity for intelligence. Uh, uh, <coughs> to fly, if you will. Uh, that's how I'm beginning to see what the man is saying there. Uh, those are the moments, those are the moments <laughs> of uh, Responsibility. Do you take responsibility? See, you don't want to take responsibility for, uh, for what's yeah. happening. You just uh, it's, you're one, you don't want your little world to be disturbed, right? Right. 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 But that the, that the the real life example for that is exactly what he's saying. The real life example is when the parents are working on something. 
the kid starts making noise, the kids immediately say, the parents immediately say, shut up and get out. But the kid, <laughs> want your, kid wants your attention. Kid wants your attention. That there is a mischief there, and at the same time he is doing it because he wants to be attended. That's what Malcolm is saying when he's saying knocking on the door. Well, but but you still don't even know why why the, the That's kid right. is yeah. is asking. So yeah. where, where do you? If you get just you know, I mean, uh, if you keep like attending to these disturbances, then you have no life. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. it's just constant. Well, yeah, yeah. No, 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 so when you when you say you keep attending, what you, <coughs> what you do is you make an ideal out of it. Yes. You're saying I should always attend. Yeah. You know, and then I mean, the, I, I was interested because I, while while I was talking, I think because your beginning question was like in uh, when you were checking in, you said yeah about effortless existence, right? Then no effort. <laughs> now, if you say to yourself, I have to attend, you're making an effort. <laughs> You know, if you say I should never respond, it's also you t you're making an effort. So it's interesting from the bigger perspective. We're looking yes. at how do you, how do I, how does one respond to that, taking consideration one's own reserves, the amount of energy you have, because you might not have the energy to attend. To I might just call the police and this. But perhaps. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <we can> also <laughs> yeah. but so but so but if you come from an ideology. I always have to find out what the course is, spend five hours talking and call the parents <laughs> and then, and then you're going to be... But that's coming from an ideology, you see. You create a new ideology based upon what you think is effort that's living. On the other hand, in the Krishnamurti Gan, you can say that taking that example, Krishnaji is talking and this person is somehow not happy about something and constantly keeps coming up, talking on the mic, interrupting Krishnamurti. That some, something has to be done about that situation yeah. too, right? This can say, oh well, let's find out what his problem is and spend two hours looking into his life and <laughs> why he's doing that. Oh, he did, uh, he changed from dialogue, he went to questions and answers. Mm -hmm. The next year it was over. Right. <laughs> the next year what? Next year he changed from dialogue <coughs> to questions and answers. In Sana he used to have dialogue. So people would come up and, and, and then it would become became a mess and then he said write down your questions like he was sitting there yesterday with his piece of paper <coughs> and he would respond to some of those questions. So, so yes. going back from here in this situation <coughs> does it lead to the question awakening? Awakening means aware of awakening I'm not going to take awakening aware of the situation. <coughs> Awareness mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. of the situation. Well, what I'm what I'm understanding is actually it, uh, like it, you take the child parent mm -hmm. of knocking on the door. All we are getting disturbed is because I'm in my own world and I don't want to be disturbed. Which Malcolm put it like known unknown, but I put it in a simple sentence saying that you know. I'm doing my things, I don't want to be disturbed. So are you aware that you are doing it? Aware that you're doing what? Mm -hmm. Aware that you are pushing aside the kid mm -hmm. without him mm -hmm. looking why he's doing it. <coughs> There's no awareness. All that is, I am, you are, get out. Mm -hmm. But if you come into the situation of being aware of what you are doing it, that's what I want to go further into it. Could I, I get something clear? Um, let's see, you were talking about conflict and, um, and I think then the example of somebody knocking on the window was mentioned, and also the the uh, the idea of attachment was mentioned. And I thought maybe we were saying at one point that uh, that conflict arose from me being attached to one thing and another person being attached to something else. So in this example, um, I would be attached to. Uh, 
silence or a space to, to continue the dialogue. I don't know what the other person's attached to. Uh, we don't know, as Malcolm says. But it doesn't matter because the conflict is there between, um, between my attachment and that person's attachment. Uh, and so could we say that conflict is, uh, involves attachment, first of all, is that what we're saying? Mm -hmm. And then uh, it is uh, different attachments <laughs> conflicting. Is that, is that right? Or what are we saying? I guess so. <clears throat> it's a lot of things. It's, uh, conflict is a huge term. That's one type of conflict. There are many, many type of levels of conflict. But perhaps there's a fundamental level uh, which gives rise to all conflicts. Can we have conflict without attachment? Mm -hmm. does, it, does conflict yeah. require mm -hmm. a, a opposing attachments? Is that what it is? Not always. Could you give an example where you see it's not? Well, conflict can be, for example, uh, just the fact that I'm self-centered, and you can, you can call that attachment to yourself. Mm, yes, yes. Or attachment yeah. to yourself. Yes, yeah, so you can reduce it to the attachment mm. issue, but that I'm divided mm. from other people. That's, that's a fundamental conflict. Yeah. No, but his question is, I don't is, think... Does it always require attachment, you say? Mm. Yeah, if there is, did you say, can we have a, a conflict without attachment? Yeah, is so this conflict, conflict involves attachment? Yeah, uh, if there is no attachment, then Can I rephrase no your conflict? question? No conflict. If there's so no <coughs> attachment, will there be conflict? Can so, so yeah. So then we would say, well, conflict is the clash of opposing <laughs> uh, uh, attachments, okay. and then we would say, without attachment, we would we wouldn't have this conflict. Mm -hmm. So we therefore, conflict. <laughs> is deeply involved with attachment. So it seems like we would have to move to the idea of attachment mm -hmm. just to go deeper into the idea of conflict. Mm -hmm. right? I'm not too sure to introduce the whole of conflict to attachment. Yeah, mm -hmm. But I agree that that's part of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. okay. But it could simply also be that I'm ignorant about the universe. That okay. creates conflict. Ignorant about the universe, about how, could what you? it exists for, what is the significance of the universe. I don't understand it. That can also be a conflict. And that doesn't involve necessarily an attachment. Could you, could you say what the conflict is then? I'm the conflict is that I don't understand the universe and therefore the universe. I'm not sure how to live in it or what to do in the universe. Yeah, but could you make it a little bit more clear where, how that, that there's a conflict coming in? I'm unaware of the universe. No? Okay, I'm, okay. I, I may think that, okay, this universe is, is for me. And therefore, I'm going to extract as many natural resources as I can yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from the planet, for example. This is just one example. Mm. And by in so doing, I may cause enormous damage to the planet. Yeah. So that's an attachment to a certain idea of how you can use the universe, right? I Not attachment, it's ignorance, mm. perhaps. So but, just, but, but that's completely the action of the self-centered. Yeah. Uh, there's so many assumptions in that, that I have the right to do this, and for my but own... I may not even understand that by doing... I may not even understand that by doing this, I may cause a whole host of other problems. Well, yeah, but, but there's right. still the, the attachment to the separate self, that I'm, I'm going to do this because I want to, and it's going to yeah. help me, and that's still... I mean, mm -hmm. ignorance is still attachment, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I, philosophically, what philosophically you're sometimes we can reduce anything to anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what you're saying is that, well, it's not a rough, uh, a rough attachment. There are subtle layers of attachments, but somehow if you start to dig, you will find some sub, mm. sub, subtle way of attachment being involved in it. Mm -hmm. in any mm -hmm. Or one may say that, for example, I'm not really fundamentally happy. And that creates conflict. Yeah. It may not be clear that that involves some attachment, but perhaps it could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, so, but roughly, if we can roughly take the assumption so about attachment, that in, in conflict attachment is involved, would you agree to that in general? It's one of the causes, I would mm. say. It's not 
the entire contemplation. So we, could, we, could we consider then attachment? What, what's going on here? What is it? Uh, is it, you know, the activity of the self, as we would say? Or what? I guess I'm not clear about the idea of attachment. What is it? Um, yeah. How could we identify? How do we know that uh, if we that a certain action or activity or feeling or something <coughs> is attachment as opposed to anything else? How do we or identify it attachment? Yeah. You know, he used the word attachment several times in the video we saw <coughs> last night, and I was thinking the same thing. I was going, well, what is attachment really? Hmm. And then he equated it with identification, and I went, oh. Mm -hmm. That helped me understand it. But he often gives examples of attachment, like I'm attached to my wife, I'm attached to my uh, uh, All business. involving identification. Yeah, that is identification. This is part of myself. Oh. No, but the, the wife could also be giving me certain pleasures, so I'm attached to that. Well, and that's, too. that's all part of the self. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe I can define it like this, you know, attachment will be not definition. The meaning I take it. If something happens to my son, it is me getting affected. Mm -hmm. That is identification. That is what? That is attachment. That is identification also. That, uh, identification is attachment. <coughs> yeah. That's me doing it. Me and doing that it. you are your son. You are your son, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So are we saying that identification is associated with attachment or it is a kind of attachment, or we're, how do we relate identification uh, with, or identifying with attachment? Identification is basically that uh, identification with the group gives me security, it gives me a, a feeling of belonging. So that is what we're attached to when we say identification. So in that sense, uh, identification is a form of attachment. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is attached <coughs> to <coughs> me, myself. Attach. So when you identify yourself with your son, you are both same. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it is. This, could it also be what Malcolm said, like attachment to something known as opposed to the unknown? And yeah, that, that thing, that string, <laughs> that string that ta attaches from, from the one to the other. What it, like you put out your hands like that, so you say, here's me, here's my son. And then when you said the, the attachment, you said, is this way? So it's like a rubber band <laughs> uh, pulling, you know, pulling them together. What is that force that, that brings the two uh, together? Yeah. What is that? that Bond, if you want to call it that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's bondage. <laughs> well, I think we'd have to ask also, um, what is it that is attached? Uh, like, let's say, if I say I'm attached to my reputation in the community, yes. what is it that's attached to what? I mean, is there something that's not my image of myself that is attached to that image? Is that possible? I mean, in other words, does the idea of attachment even make sense within itself? We'd, we'd have to be able to say, what is it that's attached to my, let's say, house, my wife, my family? We know the, the house, wife, family, car, reputation. What is it that is attached to that, yeah. if attachment means a connection? <coughs> And what, and what would be the remedy for attachment? I mean, is it care? <laughs> well, that's... I mean, like, I mean <laughs> the, the opposite of attachment is care. Well, is detachment. Detachment. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, I think if you look at it uh, anatomically, look at it anatomically, well, I remember when we were looking at the muscles, and, uh, and uh, the muscle has an attachment and, uh, from uh, like from, from here to here, uh, so you have two cords. What do they call the tendons? Uh, uh, tendons. tendons. All right. Listen to the word tendon. The, the, the word tendon has is in the word tendency. 
you have a tendency, <laughs> a, uh, a movement towards. So, so uh, the question that was asked is, what makes the, uh, uh, the what part of the muscle pulls, uh, makes it uh, flex and reflex, you know, uh, to go forward and back. And there was, uh, one end was the insertion, and the other one was the, uh, I think it's called the attachment. Yeah, attachment. <laughs> right. But the muscle moves only in one direction, right? It, 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 it pulls, it, 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 it'll pull in. <coughs> it doesn't pull out. <laughs> but, but, but pulls out. But Malcolm, we, yeah. we, we, anyway. don't, we don't even really know yet what it is that's being attached on one end. We know the, the one end is, let's say, what I'm attached to. Yes. What is it that is on the other end of this attachment? <laughs> <laughs> it's the tendon. No, no, yeah, no. So, yeah. All right. Yes, sir. And I'm saying it's the tendon. It's the tendon, the cord. Yeah, the, but now, now translate it to the, the human realm. Yeah. To psyche. It, it's the idea. It's a thought. Huh. Okay, the thought is what's attached mm -hmm. to the... The, the, the act, the self, object. The self-image, let's... <laughs> yes. But the, the self-image is the thought. So we have attachment between two thoughts. Is that what's going on? Is it together an, yeah, yeah. an entity which wants comfort or pleasure? Pleasure? Comfort, comfort or pleasure. Uh-huh. Or it doesn't want discomfort. <laughs> It seems to me like once more we're implying the existence of this thing that's sort of like a self or a me or a <coughs> an I that is attached to all these other things. But then we can never quite find that yeah. me yeah. or <laughs> self yeah. that is supposedly attached. Yeah. Mm. Just that collection of thoughts create that sensation of a continuity or a self, right? right? Uh -huh. uh, but breaking it down, there might, there might not be anything. Uh -huh. There might not be something like a notion of self. So if it's, if it's a, some entity which wants comfort or, or uh, pleasure, then is that entity in itself lacking in, by definition, is lacking in comfort? And uh, pleasure, right, or happiness. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would not seek that. But but you see, we we, we have we, we know what the seeking of pleasure is. You know, <coughs> that's desire, and we know what fear is. But, but we would not seek what pleasure. What we don't have yes. is that entity that supposedly is doing that. Um, what I'm saying is that supposedly whatever that entity is. Ah. would not seek any pleasure or comfort if it was already not lacking. Uh -huh. It's lacking in it, therefore seeking it. But suppose we just have desire and fear, but we don't have an entity that's seeking anything. But yeah, I think you seem to be starting from an a priori position that yeah. there's no entity. That's a given, and therefore what else can we think about? But perhaps there is an entity. It may be a fictitious entity. But nevertheless, it's an entity which is lacking in security, comfort, and pleasure, and therefore is constantly seeking yeah. something but out. The trouble with that is that we don't have that entity. We don't have any evidence for the existence of that entity. And yes, so we do. Well, I, think for us. I think we have lots of evidence for that. But can I, can I answer? Because there's more or less a rerun of the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And, 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 and I, think, I think you both have quite clear <coughs> positions there. And, but on the, and the essence, it's the same, right? I mean, what you're, what you're saying, well, okay, the, the whole sense of self that you're feeling is maybe nothing more than a sequence of thought. Mm -hmm. yes. and, that's, and, and there's more or less agreement on that. But I mean, I mean, because if you expect each other to use each other's language, then okay. you, can, you can battle that for a long time. Okay. And so, but you, can, but you can do maybe over email, but, but, but if you're not <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, 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 ye
and then you, and you can attach you make attachments to you. <laughs> yeah, some an attachment to you. No, but, the <laughs> but the core of your point is, um, so that's why, because otherwise the, the core gets lost, right, in the, in, in, in the battle over, uh, over words. Uh, what is that, what is it, how does the attachment come into being? Right. What, what is it, is it, is it, um, yeah. how, how, does, how does attachment come into being? Yeah, yeah that's a good what, what is the mechanism? That's well, I, I can't get beyond trying to see what attachment is, and then there's a big piece of it kind of missing for me, <laughs> like yeah. that which is attached. And yeah. so it's a little hard for me. Can it be just a thought? Can it be just, I, I really have a brain, the, the main motivation of my brain is appearing to be creating safety, uh -huh. And in order to uh, create safety, the only thing the brain can do is collect thoughts that somehow yeah. are associated with safety. So attachment is just a thought that is associated with safety. Yeah. Okay. So uh, a comfortable life is associated with safety. So mm -hmm. I'm attached to comfortable life mm -hmm. with all the elements that that entails with the various thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can kind of live with the language yes. that, uh, that says there is something that is attached mm. by just saying, well, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, it's almost in the definition, I remember in my anatomy class, I was looking at muscles, see? And then we were looking at muscle cells. And, and you find that there is, it's in a long string. It's, it's a long string where you have, uh, like the neurons and the, uh, you've got uh, the axis, the, the one end of the, uh, of the nerve cell and, and the other end of the, of the nerve cell and there uh, and in the middle is the uh, is the muscle itself the the one that that uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah that does the that does the action so it's like strings when you, when you're eating well no, you're not eating it but some people you're eating the drumstick over there <laughs> and you, you see all those strings uh, the, the attachments of the muscles themselves uh, to the bone. Uh, uh, you can see the actual cord uh, leading into the, <coughs> into the muscle, and it's a string, and it goes through the muscle, down to the other end, and, and down to the other attachment. So I think it's the stream of thought, mm. the thoughts strung together that creates this uh, Entity that that you're looking at, uh, that you want to look at this it's string. You remember uh, rope is 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 the same way. It's a it's a bunch of strings uh, put together, uh, wound together to make to make the cord. Uh, so a, a string of thoughts is could be an entity. Is it? An absolute, is it an entity or gives a sensation of an entity? No. It depends on which, on which direction you throw <laughs> 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 it. Krishna Muji, Krishna Ji definitely talks about the center and the self, so I, I think it's not totally imaginary this discussion. He talks yeah. particularly about the center which is seeking expansion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So I think to say center, center. it's not out of place mm -hmm. to talk about that. But the center the center seeking the center constantly being created and perhaps the intelligent is intelligent thing is the death of that center. Mm -hmm. Dying, right. constant dying mm -hmm. of oh, uh, any well. center, formation of any center. Living and dying, living and dying. If there's a center, then there's a perimeter. Yeah. <coughs> yes. Yeah. So it's the movement of, from the center to the perimeter that creates this being, this this thing, this circle, as it were, because that's how every circle is created. Uh, from this uh, one dot is determined to be the center, and the perimeter is. Uh, the, the distance out <coughs> and all the way uh, associated around. with the right. mm -hmm. perimeter is associated with the center. 
Right. It all comes out of the center. Yeah. <laughs> Every single thought comes out of yes, uh, the center. And it, it just depends on how far <laughs> how yeah. far I pick it up. I, I, that seems to be clear, but I and I don't think there's any uh, difference between actually either point of view. Yes. It, it's more how do you call some, something like I mean clearly there's a sensation of self or a sensation of thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's also clear that Krishna Muni said, well, uh, uh, if thought slows down, you see that actually that sensation of self is nothing more than different thoughts firing in the sequence, right? And mm -hmm. when thought slows down in meditation, that can happen. Um, yeah. So yeah, so so this was so when we go back to the question, uh, because that was the um, because then it was like question nine. What is it that transforms if there is no self? Meaning, if the if the center is nothing more than a, 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 um, a collection of thoughts in order to keep, create safety, create emotional safety. What is it that needs to transform when there is when there is not really a center in that? It's yes. just more more enough and more than a collection of things. Yes. So so that's then more. Uh, uh, here we can go there. What would transformation mean in that? Respect? Yes. Didn't you start to touch on that? Mm. Mm. Um, when you said you talked about living and dying. Moment to moment. Is it related? Could, could you elaborate on that? Well, if you ask, if, if the self is totally imaginary and fictitious, mm. then the transformation is also fictitious, mm. because there's nothing to transform. <laughs> yeah. It's fictitious, right? So, I mean, from that perspective, <laughs> this whole thing is a waste of time. That's, that seems to be obvious, right? <laughs> right. So, perhaps it's the consciousness which is being released from that fictitious movement, mm -hmm. I would say. And, and if you elaborate on that, what, what would that mean? Because there's a, a reality, a consciousness in, in the universe which seems to be caught in a wrong movement mm. of this separative self, uh, the ego, whatever you want to call it. Mm. And when that, uh, the, the falseness of that is seen, mm. Mm. then the consciousness or energy or intelligence is released from that false movement. Mm. Mm. That's what I would say to that. So the ending of the the, the illusion. Yes. That it, it's not, so the transformation is the ending of the illusion. <coughs> yes. yeah. Like the ending of the veil, right? What you were saying yesterday. Yeah, and I guess that that would bring, um, as Krishna Krishnamurti says, a tremendous energy because mm. so much energy is invested in the self, in, mm. in that illusion. Mm. So there's great energy. And then there's living in harmony with the universe. And right now there's living in this harm. Mm. So there's no conflict. There's no conflict. Yes. So would, would we be saying that, um, let's see, if there's no center, the transformation has happened, or uh, there's no transformation needed? Or, mm -hmm. um, it is needed. In, it is needed. If, if there's no center and no self, if we imagine that, condition, mm. um, then I guess there isn't a question of transformation anymore. Mm. Mm. Is, that, is that right? Would we, would we think there's still transforming to do if there's no me? There's no self that needs to be transformed. Right. That's obvious, right? So, it, you know. But that's a conceptual question. You're saying that if we imagine this state, then there's no transformation. But the reality is that the energy and intelligence is caught up in this false notion. Yeah. And therefore it's creating an mm. enormous discord and disharmony. Mm. Mm. But, we, but we know that the thought can stop mm. and um, therefore the me is no more for that period of time anyway. And so that would mean, I guess, <coughs> the question of transformation is no longer Current, I guess, would we say. So Perhaps in a situation like that, I would say that the thought uh, may stop temporarily. Mm -hmm. But there's an enormous momentum there underneath, 
it may stop temporarily. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's like so what, what temporary momentum. What creates the momentum? What's the drive behind attachments. this movement? Attachments. But we, with, uh, then we caught, right? Because yeah. we said attachment is thought. <laughs> and we say there's a movement of thought. The movement of thought is created by the attachment. But that's it's 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 only temporary and partial ceasing yeah. of that yeah. phenomenon. It's not really totally over, <laughs> in other words. Why wouldn't Because there's enormous that? unfulfilled desires. Maybe it's just a bad habit. I'm serious. You know how well, yeah. hard it is to break a long standing habit. Yeah. Mm. Or um, how easy it is. Maybe it's really just neurological that we've run the same pattern so many times mm -hmm. that even maybe it stops momentarily, but then there's another impulse either from the outside or within that kicks it on again. Well, well, it kicks it on again, but what kicks it off? I mean, what, uh, what is it? What's what left? Stop? This is my idea. What is a circle without a center? Oh, I don't know. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. thing. <laughs> but uh, it's just the, set, the, the circle is defined by the perimeter. Once the perimeter uh, ends, you still have the center, <laughs> the point at which. Do you? Uh, I don't think there's a point. Though. Every circle is determined by one by two points, <coughs> and one of those points be, is the center. Yeah, but what are you meaning? The circle is. The circle is defined by the movement. No, what are what's your analogy? A circle. Us. What is the circle? It's a metaphor for... Yeah, thought. For thought. Yeah. So the circle is all the thoughts? The circle is all the thoughts centering around one, one thought. One thought? But in, in, just in the physical aspect, of Jesus, <laughs> making a circle, you start with a point. Yeah, yeah, we get no, that. No, it's, just, it's like you're running, you keep running this uh, In abstract <laughs> image. And Is a circle an abstract image? Yes. Yes. Baloney. Yes. There's well, two points. But you, <laughs> but now, now when you're using it as a metaphor, and we're trying to understand, at least I'm trying to understand yeah. what it's a metaphor for, and you're saying thoughts, and now you're saying there's one thought that is the center, that keeps it intact? Yes, me. Is there well, perhaps one there's thought? only Perhaps there's only the perimeter. That, don't, even, don't even have yeah, to worry about the center. The, the perimeter is itself is the center. The boundary itself is the center. Right? You don't have to worry about two points there. Maybe no, it's no. not a good metaphor. No, no, it's a good metaphor it's in the sense. Metaphor. It's a good metaphor in the sense. Center <clears throat> is you. And you are there's a vast amount of knowledge. There's what? Vast amount of knowledge, okay? Knowledge. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to scratch you of this thing. There is vast amount of knowledge. <coughs> yeah. There's always learning and learning. This center is limited in its knowledge. It what? Limited in itself in the knowledge. Yeah. So, what happens is, if the center is gone, there's no knowledge. What is the center? The center is you. <laughs> yeah, but we said the center is thoughts. Yeah. Thought is you. <coughs> yeah. Thought so is you. So what happened? No, the, the, the difficulty I'm a little bit having, I mean, for yeah. myself, and I'm just... Okay. But if I the the analogy, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, analogies can be helpful, but I can also make it really complicated, <laughs> because then I have to follow the analogy, then yes. go back to <laughs> understanding <laughs> what's happening. Yeah. So I'm... In the there is not a converging. Uh, so let, let him finish. Yeah. In the physical plane, if the center, center and there is two points he was telling, yeah. point, 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 like that. There are yeah. a lot of points. This yeah. is connection. Yeah. So now if the center is gone, there is no connection. Then you are in the vast space. Mm. You are in space. Mm. And when he brought that, that's what came into my mind. Mm. You are in the space. Not the center is gone. I think the periphery is to go. The circumference has to go. Yeah. Then you're in unbounded space. But the circumference is determined 
by the center. No. Center. Yeah, it is. The circumference all determines the center. <laughs> no, no, the circumference no. determines the center. I, yes, sorry, I don't find this a very helpful analogy because I, I cannot, cannot follow. I can't. And I don't know yeah. how, if others can follow. But it makes it, it, it just more complicated. I think that the, I could follow where we are and I don't know where we were before. Yeah. But <laughs> it seems to be simpler to say that thought, if thought stops or ends or is, is no longer churning around, in other words, there's stillness and silence here, even for a very short period of time, then the center is no more because the center is, in fact, this stuff. Is that, has that been your experience? Hmm? Has that been your experience? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that... that, that I mean, it thought stops, as you say, when you're meditating and so on. Does it forever go? No, I'm... You said a moment. We don't have to be concerned with how long this period of silence lasts. We just can just see that in silence there is no center or me. Or, and any of us can experience that. But for it to have any power, there has to be something which exists all the time. Otherwise, sometimes you're sane, sometimes you're insane. Okay, we can have consciousness, which, which, <laughs> which then is perce perception, a state of, of being awake rather than sound asleep. But that can, we can have that condition without thought going. Okay? And then you would go, well, what's going on there? And what's going on there is perception. We're hearing <coughs> the birds, we're seeing, you know, the trees, or we're, we're feeling the air. I mean, all of that is going on. We are still alive, but we're just not processing it in, in motion in the brain. When that happens, when we have that state of meditation, as Krishnamurti would say, uh, then, um, then there is no me, there's no center, because there's no <coughs> motion. And, and the center, what's being called the center, or the me, or the I, is dependent on that motion because it, in fact, is that motion. There's no difference between the center, the me, the I, and that movement. Um, that's the way it seems. Yeah. But again, as, as Jacques was saying yesterday, that there has to be some deeper understanding of the whole issue as well. Yeah, Munyal, I was wanted to, because I asked you before, what, so what, according to you, is the, mo the, the momentum behind this? What, what gives it, mm. you know, I mean, it's clear that there are uh, moments mm. where thought can be in a <coughs> it can happen spontaneously or it can happen through <coughs> certain practice that you have moments where yes, it's yes. I think. It seems to me that it's memory, which is the momentum. Because we, we uh, look at some very beautiful car and we say, I want that car. It gives me great pleasure. It would give me great pleasure to own that car. And that, that becomes a memory, an impression in the consciousness. So that memory is constantly giving rise to the momentum of... It is the momentum. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that kind of gets you back into the... Yeah, exactly. The, the, I you know, have help. a question. So you, so you did, uh, and there are many such, many such memories. Yeah. And unless it perhaps one understands very fundamentally the whole process, all those memories will have enormous power over you. To go into that process, then what triggers the memory? The memories will come up spontaneously That's because it's okay. unfulfilled. You can't it's say they'll come up. <laughs> it's, well, no. That's not an answer. <coughs> well, no, it's always why there. Why do they come up? <coughs> they come up because. Them? That's their nature. Is, is their, their nature. So it's a spontaneous so activity of the brain? It's like I've decided a plan that I'm going to get this thing. And until that's fulfilled, it'll always come up. It may be buried for a while, but then ah, I still want that. You know, you know, people talk about the bucket list. So you say right? Bucket list. <laughs> before yeah. I die, I want to do all these things. So they're always lodged in your brain. So yeah, that before I die, I will, I'm going to do all these things. So that, <coughs> those are the memories. Or something you see that, like, kind of, <coughs> you want it, and then you go. You know, something that you see that gives you great pleasure, <coughs> and then you turn it into, you mean, um, A something to kind of, like, well, go after. Yeah. I, I understand how 
Okay, you have this desire, there's something you want, and then maybe you see it, and that triggers. But what if sometimes it does, it seems like there's no external trigger, nothing you see, nothing in the environment that I'm aware of activates that memory. So I'm wondering, because sometimes it seems like they just come, and I don't know why. There doesn't seem to be any perception that's <coughs> <coughs> well, memories don't necessarily have to arise because of a stimulus. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Yes. Why, why do you think they arise then? Are you saying it's just the nature of the it's brain? It's the nature of, of memory yes, and thought. Of the brain? Of the brain. Yes. So it's, a, it's physiological. Just like, for example, you remember who you are, right? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, then you have Alzheimer's. So it's the nature of memory to be active. <coughs> you know. <coughs> I think it is more than memory, and um, before memory triggers, triggers in, when you see, in your example, you see the car. You see the car, she sees the car. You pay attention to the car. She doesn't pay attention to the car. <laughs> then, <coughs> then, no offense. <laughs> then, because of, my yes. favorite. Yeah, that's it. That's not, okay. So, it doesn't get it. They don't go into memory. No, it's not always the case, but yeah. I'm saying that. But attention is there. Many things may suit your fancy. So for me, your know, car may not be. No, it's yeah, 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 yeah. example, but. I have, I have uh, this problem. Okay? Just a desire, seeing and desire, is not only me seeing and going back, me is the thought. <coughs> the thought doesn't belong to. Uh, just in Manjar. Mm -hmm. So that, as she said, it originally kicks it out. It doesn't kick out in just one, because of one brain. It's the momentum of the collective Collective consciousness, consciousness uh, uh, one feels, one sees in the brain. <coughs> I may not desire the car, I may not like it, as a me, as a person, different, separate person, but somebody else likes all that momentum comes in my brain. So what do you call that? That's where is the You problem. see that somebody else is desiring the car, so therefore you also desire the car? That comes in your brain, that's what I'm saying. Because you see him doing that or for some no, unconscious you to see connection? It. No, you don't have to see it. The whole momentum comes. Uh -huh. <coughs> Those thoughts also come in your brain. That's what she was saying. Now that that's, uh, we we spoke about it several times, but I still cannot understand that at a level, maybe as quote unquote realized soul, maybe it is, but in an ordinary plane, his desire, you see it, not you see it. The momentum comes comes to you. I cannot really place it. You cannot see the unconscious connection. You can see a Con conscious connection. connection. Yeah. connection. Yeah, the element maybe that she's trying to bring in is that um, we are maybe far more connected than we imagine. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah we are like more that, connected. The, the consciousness of what happens in the world or what happens in the United States or is even present in us, mm -hmm. even without being directly in contact. As mm -hmm. you know that that. that uh, but so, that's so. But the part of yeah, this at this point, way, yeah, yeah. irrelevant. Yeah. But independent of that. Um, um, because, I mean, I think we, uh, the, the broader context is that we're looking at this from human suffering. That's an abstraction. And the starting point then is uh, our day-to-day -day conflict, which is suffering. Mm -hmm. right? the, really, uh, the day -to -day, the conflict in our, in our workplace, in our lives, internally, with friends, with relatives. So, it's, it, so this exploration is not an abs abstract exploration, it's really about who we are and how we live as a human. As a human. And we've looked at, um, what Jan also was saying, is that, uh, okay, uh, there seems to be the notion of self, there seems to be the notion of the thinker, uh, and we've explored that and we more or less look, uh, said, well, this, the, the sense of self might just arise because there are many thoughts and they're firing quickly and uh, that may, the, uh, the sense of continuity, <coughs> sense of continuity in it, but there might not be something like a center of it. So, and then we, 
realize, okay, then the question of transformation is not a transformation of self, because uh, that will be just a change of the content, which is meaningless. Um, now, I'm ju I'm, so I'm just trying to, to bring in, to be aware that we, it's not an abstract discussion, we're talking about something that's really related to when you go away and you get home, uh, this is the life you, that's the, that we are looking at. So, the question can conflict come to an end, and yesterday we had the question, can all fear come to an end, which is also we explored, <coughs> and uh, which is now, um, uh, well, and this morning we looked at the, uh, conflict and attachment, so attachment has to come to an end, which is again related to thought, can thought come, can come to an end, uh, <coughs> so, um, and we seem to be all more or less agreeing that and there are moments when thought is in abeyance, but their moments are short and there may be exercises where that happens a little bit more frequently, but the momentum, the drive behind it, is still, uh, is still very much present. <coughs> I mean, uh, so yeah. something that, yeah, the thought as the, our security machine, of, of which we are so identified with, it seems to have a strong momentum, that's why I also ask, mm. and it seems to be unstoppable almost, like a, you know, and, and when you think you want to change it, the thought goes from one, I'm breaking this habit, and then suddenly you find yourself in a new habit, you know, it forms quickly, identifies it with something else, I escape from this into that. Now, overseeing that whole field, what are we going to do, <laughs> you know, I mean, and also with, with, with that sense of urgency, that it's not a theoretical discussion, it's not, you know, we're not trying to convince each other of something, but that we're really looking at this from the point of view of our uh, uh, a real concern for our daily life and care for our daily life. And so I just wanted to, <coughs> to frame it a little bit more here. Mm -hmm. Have you been, I mean, perhaps we shouldn't ask personal questions, but have you been able to come out of that momentum yourself? Because you've been presumably involved in this much more than any of us because you're in it all the time. Has no. it No, 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 I think I come back for me, with the way I'm completely like as I'm saying, no change there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, I, and I think also because the ingredient that you, you brought it up was the ingredient of observation and I think that's maybe the, you know, that's maybe um, the, a key element, a key factor. <coughs> that was your question, right? Observation. My question was not observation, my question was oh, something else. Oh, somebody brought what is observation, yeah. That Intelligence, I think, was Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and perhaps those two are linked. Yes. Now, so, because with the momentum, I guess, uh, a big part of that momentum is due to because it's somehow half in the darkness. Right? I think when, this, when we're attached and we're not aware, really conscious that we're attached to something, like I'm afraid that I'm... Uh, losing my livelihood, but I, it's not really conscious, then that has an enormous stronghold on me. Mm -hmm. you know? So, and there are lots of these uh, uh, memories and, atta and attachments that have a long, strong stronghold on us, but we, it, it never comes to the surface. We're so used to swimming in this soup of ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that it's, uh, yeah. um, it's um, um, like a fish in the water, it never looks at the water around it because it's that's that's mine. <laughs> So, and that's what we, we're trying to bring back uh, here is that maybe we have to look at the most obvious things, right? Who, wh what is it that is happening in my daily life? Like the man knocking on the door that you started with. Is, am, I, am I so attached? Trying, I'm trying to so uh, control the space around me and want my life to be in a certain way yes. which excludes other things. And that actually makes that I'm becoming tense and nervous and creating conflict with any disturbance. You know what I mean? Not that, that we should change that, because that's a different question. But are we aware that, that it's so? You know? Are we aware that we actually, I'm scared to death to lose my livelihood? Or am I scared to death to lose approval in my life? Or I'm scared to death that I'm, uh, friends won't recognize me? Or that, um, <coughs> that I'm losing the workspace that I know for so long, because uh, that's all I know. I know how people see me in that way. And I, so, you know, then it becomes a real light. Uh, so, so I, I guess that's where the the, the the element that we have to take in consideration, the whole aspect of observation, you know, and so. <coughs> <coughs>
just want to throw that out. <laughs> <coughs> and I also wanted to throw it out because it's 11.29. This is a good moment to look at the last video, I think, and have a cup of coffee in between. Uh, mm. and or we have a request, huh? if it is all right, if we continue the video, then we will leave. Uh, we we got to leave at 12.30, Okay. Test. We got to take the car. Plane. Mm. Yeah. It's dry. One o'clock we have to leave to catch the plane in yeah. the lakes. But we are attached here. Take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to break confidence. Yes, good, but two more. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there yeah, anything, so is there anything you would like to say or are you going to join us for coffee or are you going to go straight up with you? No, what she is saying, uh, eh, let's is. continue, that's what you mean? Yeah. yeah. Without break and we continue, that's what she is saying. It's a question. It's a so we're going to have a break, we're going to have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. And we thought that. I thought about putting on the video. What, did, okay, what, what would you say? Video. Video. Yeah. Okay. And what do other people say? That's good. She thinks she wants the video now, without the break. Without the break? No without break. The break okay, what right. time do yeah. you have to leave? <coughs> without the break. By one o'clock. Oh, one o'clock. Mm. So, if we started it, if we just took like five minutes and five we started minutes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
on my comfort. Chris Creek. Sana in Switzerland. Oh, Krishnamurti and Sana. Uh, Swiss in Switzerland. Yeah. Oh, that place is ways. so beautiful. Yeah. You've been there? I went there once, you yeah. know, and it's just so high. And it's just like the Tibet of Europe, it uh -huh. seems. You just go it's up so with the little train, up and up yeah. and up. Mm -hmm. I looked up for Simon. It's a beautiful thing. It's from the Algonquin Indian language. For Simon? Yes, the it's word? from the, uh, the word is in the fungal, oh, really? and it's a, uh, artificially they call it, so they, because people couldn't understand or really translate the, uh, the Indian language. Persimmons are not native to this country, so how could it be an Indian? You mean an American uh, Indian word or a... Well, it's the Algonquin, but uh, so that would be the North American, wouldn't it? But they're not native. How would they know about them? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> they're not native? Where were they? Mm -hmm. Where were they? Oh, they were saying Persia. Yeah. 
That's a tent. Good question. Uh, a a big tent. tent. A it's a nice so this one, the quality is uh, not so good and don't have subtitles. So you better sit close to the sound. You have to sharpen your ears. Sharpen your ears. Observe. Uh, what year are we looking at? Uh, it's 85. Oh, so it's in size. Oh, 85 means yeah. old. Yeah. Wow. 85 means it's last two days? Huh? Last year. Last year. Last year, yes. Yeah. He looks very young. Well, from far. From far, yeah. We all look young from far. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice tent. What did you say? We all look young from fire. Oh, fire. To her all be a note. They also are not terrible to talk. And also, the job they do. It is not a soul, but to get, and the speaker means to get, not that he is leading you or tipping you or trying to persuade you, but rather to get. And that word is important. <laughs> Together we take a very, very long journey. It's rather a difficult path. Rather, I won't use that word. It's a dangerous word. A, a sort of a delay. A way that it will be rather complex because we are going to talk about self interest, austerity, conduct, and if it is possible in our daily life to end all sorrow. This is a very important question. <coughs> Why humanity, after so many thousands and thousands of years, have never been free from sorrow? Not only each one's sorrow, the pain, the anxiety, the loneliness involved in that sorrow, but also the sorrow of mankind. We're going to talk about that. And also, if we have time, we're going to talk about pleasure and also death. That's a lovely morning. Beautiful. Clear of the sky, the quiet hills, and the deep shadows, and the valley waters, the meadow, the grove, and the green grass. We all also to talk over together what is beauty on such a lovely morning. Could we talk about what is beauty? Well, that's a very important question. Not the beauty of the nature or the Ordinary vitality, dynamic energy of a tiger. You have only seen tigers in a zoo. 
with the four things you have kept there for your own use. If you go to some parts in the world, as the speaker has done, he was close to a white tiger as close at two feet away. Don't really excite me. And we should also go into this question because without beauty and love there is no truth. And we all ought to examine very closely the word beauty. What is beauty? You are asking that question, and so is the speaker asking that question. So we are both together looking not only at the world, the implications of that world, and the immensity, the incalculable depth should we talk about it? We can talk about it, but the talk, the words, the explanations and the descriptions are not beautiful. The world of beauty is not beauty. It is something totally different. So one must be, if one, if one may point it out, one must be very alert to words. Because our brain works exactly in a movement of words. Words convey what one feels, what one thinks, and accepts the explanations, descriptions, because our whole brain structure, most of it, is wrong. So we must go into it very, very carefully, not only with regard to beauty, but also with regard to austerity, with regard to self-interest. We are going to go into all these questions this morning, if we will. So we are asking ourselves, what is beauty? Is the beauty in a person, in a face? Is beauty in the music? In the museums, paintings, classical paintings, modern paintings, is beauty in all the music, Beethoven, Mozart, Bach, and all the rest of them. Is beauty in a poem? In literature, dancing, and all the noise that's going on in the world called music. Is all that beauty, all that is beauty something entirely different? Right? We are 
going into it to get Please don't be for me respectfully point out. Don't accept the words. Merely be satisfied with description and explanation. Not agreeing and disagreeing on that business. Let's put up hope, all of it, if we can, from our brain. And look at it very carefully, stay, penetrate into the world. Because as we say, without the quality of beauty, which is sensitivity, which implies not only the beauty of nature, the deserts, the forests, the rivers, and the vast mountains with their immense dignity, majesty, but also the feel, not the romantic imaginations and sentimental states. Those are merely sensations. The beauty they will ask for a sensation. Because we live by sensations. Sexual sensation, with which goes pleasure, but also the pain that's involved in the feeling that is not being fulfilled and so Virgo this morning put out all those words from our brain and look at going to this enormous question very complicated subject what is the nature of beauty? We're not making a point. When you look at those mountains, those immense rocks jetting into the sky, If you look at it quietly, you feel the immensity of it, the enormous majesty of it. And for the moment, for the second, that tremendous dignity of it, the serenity of it, Put away all your thoughts, your problems for a second. Right? And <coughs> she have a marvelous idea. So what has taken place there? The majesty of those mountains for a second the very immensity of the sky and the blue 